guys! Welcome back to 90 Feet From Home. I'm your host Ashley and today we are going to continue our discussion of the postseason as we head into October or whenever you're watching this and you just want to find out more about how the postseason works. Welcome from the past to you in the future. I hope you enjoy. Um, anyway, this is just going to be kind of a quick breakdown of how the different seeds work, how the different series work, and we're going to get a little bit more into World Series history and also a little bit more into the wild card in different episodes coming up soon, or perhaps already filmed. I have no idea how these are going to air. So if it's already out, I'll link it up above. And if it's not, you can look forward to it coming soon. So today we're just going to find out exactly how the postseason kind of bracketing system works, which teams face off against which, and how many games are played in each of those particular series, so that you have an idea of what to expect in the coming postseason. Ten teams make it to the MLB postseason, five in each of the different leagues, American and national. This consists of the three division winners for the East, Central, and West, each of which has five teams, and the division winner of each of those different divisions is automatically advanced forward to the postseason. There are then also two wild card winners in each of those leagues, and those wild cards are determined by who had the next best record of any of the teams in that particular league. Now, like I said, we're going to get into the wild card specifically in its own episode because it has kind of changed and evolved over the years, that there are two wild card teams in each of the leagues. So we kick off the postseason with a one-off game between each of those wildcard teams. So each of the wildcard winners in our particular league will have kind of a sudden death one-time game against the other wildcard team in that same league. And the winner of that will then advance on to the rest of the postseason. So you'll see each of those wildcard teams face off in a single game and then they'll proceed onwards to the rest of the series. Whereas the loser of that game is now done from the postseason and you're down to four teams for each of the leagues. But Ashley, you might ask yourself, or perhaps not, but now you can, what would happen if there was a tie in one of those divisions or a tie for a wildcard position? Well, in that case, and I'm actually gonna do a separate episode, there would be what's referred to as a game 163. Now there are 162 games in the regular season of baseball and much like that one-off wildcard game, 163 is the type of game that determines who then has the best record of that season. Now there's a caveat to this in the instance where the team that would lose that game would then also be assured to have a wild card position. They would not then play a game 163 and it would just come down to which of the two teams had the better season series against the other team that they would be playing for that 163 game. So this would then assure that team that had lost the season series would also still get an opportunity to go into the playoffs as a wild card team. So that's kind of a weird caveat, but just keep it in mind. And this goes actually deeper because what happens if the two teams within that division actually split their series between them? Say those teams played 18 games against each other that year and happened to split that series equally at nine games apiece. Well, they would actually then go back and look at how the last half of the season or the last 81 games of that season fared and who had the better record of those 81 games. And if somehow they were still tied, it would go back to 82. 83, 84, until you found out who had the better record for the latter part of the season, that team would then be declared the division winner and the other one would go on to have the wild card position. So there you go. That one's really weird and very rarely happens, but that is how that's determined. So once you have a winner from that wild card game, let's get back to that. The two wild card teams played each other. There's a game. You've had a winner. That winner has been determined to go on to the postseason. The winner of that wild card game would then play against whichever team had the best overall season record in that league. Then the two remaining division winners who were not the ones with the best record that season would then go on to face each other. And this series is referred to as the division series, either the ALDS or the NLDS, American League Division Series, National League Division Series. And this is basically the first real round of play in the postseason. Now these series are a best of five and whichever team had the better record between the two is considered the home team and gets home field advantage and games one, two, and five would be played at that team's stadium, whereas games three and four would be played at the stadium of the team with the lesser record. Now the winners of this division series would then go on to face each other in the championship series. And this again is either the ALCS or the NLCS. 
National League Championship Series, American League Championship Series. And once again, in this case, whichever team between the two has the better record is the home team for that series. Now, the difference between the Championship Series and the Division Series is that the Championship Series is a best of seven, meaning it can go to seven games and is a little bit of a longer haul. The winner of that Championship Series is considered to be the winner of their league overall throughout that season. So they at least get that title going for them until they head into the World Series. The World Series is a best of seven game between the winner of the National League Championship Series and the American League Championship Series. Now for a little stretch of time, whichever of the leagues had won the All-Star game would get home field advantage for the World Series. But this has since been done away with, so we're still sticking with that best record. And whichever of the two teams had the better seasonal record gets home field advantage for the World Series. And home field advantage here is split slightly differently um, in that games one, two, and six and seven are given to the team with the better record with the three games in the middle being played at the lesser record team's home stadium. Now, of course, because you have an odd number of games, it means there is no way to tie any of those series. Uh, it is worth noting, however, because they are such short series compared to the length of the 162 game season overall, that there is something of a small sample size in effect, which means just because a team was better throughout the season doesn't necessarily mean they're a shoe in to win the World Series or even one of their division series series championship games. Because you're only playing at max five or seven games against those teams, there's a real opportunity for an underdog team to kind of run away with things, which makes the entire postseason really exciting to watch. So there you go, guys. Just a really quick overview of how the different seeds work, which teams play which, how many games, and all the great stuff that you have to look forward to this October. Hope it helped. Hope you enjoy. Hope you're looking forward to the postseason. I know I am. And if you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up down below. Let me know which team you're rooting for in the 2019 postseason. Uh, I know which ones I've got my heart set on, but I'm not going to be biased because who knows if they'll even make it at this point. Uh, when this goes live, it might have already been figured out, but who knows. Uh, remember to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell if you want to be notified every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday when a new episode goes live. And of course, you can always follow me on social media where I'm at 90 feet from home on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Until next time, guys, we'll see you later.